like to support the insiders pick up some merch now support us by getting a shirt a hoodie support abby's window get a shenanigans shirt whatever you'd like pick up some merch now insiders pro wrestling the link is at the end of the video What's going on, guys? Happy Sunday evening, and welcome to another episode of Between the Ropes. We are here to talk all about what happened in the previous week of wrestling and all the shows, big news, and, and uh, we'll have our lists that we do, and we'll have our sell or no sell, and we'll have a grievance or two, and we're just going to have a good old time because it's getting close to WrestleMania season. So much going on in the world of professional wrestling in almost all the shows. You're hearing something almost daily uh, from, from the wrestlers themselves and just from different promotions and things like that. So we're gearing up for one of the best months of the year in April, Jeff. And uh, man, I'm, I'm psyched. We, we came off an, another amazing show uh, on TNA on Thursday night. Uh, they're doing great things. We've got, you know, we had a tremendous match. Uh, an I Quit match, one of the best I Quit matches I've ever seen happen this past week uh, on AEW Dynamite. Uh, we have stuff going on in NXT. We've got the Cody Rhodes and Roman thing happening and, and The Rock and all of that happening in wrestling. Man, Jeff, what a great time it is right now to be a wrestling fan. I was just about to say right now, if you're a wrestling fan, you have to be extremely, extremely happy. <clears throat> not just with one promotion like you mentioned but with everything uh that's out there uh we often say this here but if you can't find something that you like at this point in the world of professional wrestling that is a you problem yes. uh it's not the the problem of the promotions everyone seems to be hitting their strides and uh it's really good to see it's really good to see all the companies doing well and producing some great content and putting on some some great matches out there so good stuff yeah it really is i i love it when uh you know you hear and not only are you seeing you know fans of course like ourselves but um you listen to other shows and stuff like that like i do and, and you're hearing like the excitement in the voices of some of the actual wrestlers that don't necessarily wrestle anymore uh I heard mark henry talking about some of the stuff on busted open the other day he's all excited it's just it's just a great time man it really is uh this is, and like jeff said if you can't get excited for april in wrestling and everything that's going on man then you probably need to be watching some other form of entertainment uh, because this is uh, 
it's just a, it's been a blast. Uh, everything that's going on, so much being talked about, and we're here uh, to do all that tonight. We missed last week, of course. I apologize for that, uh, but we are back and we're ready to roll. We've got a lot to discuss tonight. So first things first, we'll tell you a little bit about the uh, what we got coming up. Obviously, um, Abby's. We will keep you posted. Obviously, we'll keep that TBA for you. We will let you know everything that's going on. I know Jody again isn't feeling well, uh, so uh, please keep her in your thoughts. She got a strep back again, and so we'll keep you posted as to what's happening there. Uh, obviously, us. We will be back on Thursday for TNA uh, Impact, and of course, we're there every single Thursday night at eight o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and then it rolls all back around and. We'll be back here next Sunday for another episode of this very show. So that's what we've going on. We've got going on, rather. Uh, let me look and see who we've got in the chat, and we will start moving forward. Eric Rousseau is here. Hey, Eric, how are you? Long time no see. Uh, DRO is here. What's going on? Brandon Wayne Lewis is here. Derek Fleming is here. We're in a blizzard. Yeah, Jeff just had one, too, man. It's in, That's crazy, dude. Um, in the March, in the March, and we're getting thinking snow, man. Not just a little bit. I'm shocked we didn't get it. And normally where we are in the mountains, but we missed it. We got all rain out of that. And it was a monster storm that wrapped up. Uh, we got a ton of rain like over overnight. That would have been a little bit colder by us. We would have gotten bombarded with it too. Uh, but that was the same storm that hit Albany and Jeff and they, they got plastered up there. So yeah, it's been, it's crazy, man. You know, I, I, I was watching some uh, local TV and stuff last night. I usually never watch any of that stuff, but you know, there's a there was a some something on there. It was a little, you know, a little nerve wracking in a way. Um, one of the things that was on the local news was something from FEMA talking about flood preparation and all that kind of stuff. And that's not something we really usually ever see around here because again, we're in the mountains. Um, but oh, man, we're we're just it's been such a rainy last few months, rain and snow, rain and snow. Uh, it, so uh, maybe why they're they're telling people that you know that people that are near the rivers uh, are are very high streams very very high so it is it's getting a little dangerous with all this precipitation we can use some dry weather uh, but it's uh it's been crazy so um and i'm sure that it's it's probably just going to continue we don't get spring anymore here uh, at all we literally get a week or two of spring and it goes right into summer it seems like it goes winter to summer and then summer to, to uh, winter it, we don't get much spring or fall anymore uh, which sucks because they're my two favorite seasons um, we have Brandon Wayne Lewis is here. We have Derek, like I said, Jeremy Dunderman, member of the channel. Welcome, Jeremy, and thank you for being a member. We appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you to our members. Uh, we've got Uncle Howdy is here. What's up? We've got uh, Gus is here. What's going on, Gus? Dylan is here. Uh, Big Dan is here. What's up, Big Dan? Anthony Slate, another member of our channel. Anthony Slate, round of applause for you as well. Thank you, thank you for being here. Uh, Damian Robinson is here. What's up, Damian? Conrad is in the house. What's up, Conrad? Alexa Bliss Gamer 0809 is here. We have uh, Clown. I think I mentioned Andrea is here. What's up, Andrea? Hello, how are you tonight? We have uh, A Jobson is here. What's up, A? We have Bonus Baby is here. You mentioned you mentioned uh, champagne recently. Better Christopher Walken SNL skit champagne. Do I need more? Oh, such good stuff. Christopher Walken's the best. Um, happy fellow Sunday insiders. Happy fellow. Happy Sunday to you as well. Uh, and I think I might. Oh, James Chadwick. What's up, James? A rare appearance for James on a Sunday because he's usually in bed by now. Thanks, dude, for coming out. Seth seven two five got back from getting my Bray Wyatt tattoo done. Very very cool. Uh, of course, I have mine. Yes, and uh, I, I wear it proudly. Uh, RK Shuttlesworth is here. What's up? We have Alessandro Lanzillo or Lanzillo. If I say it wrong, I am sorry. Um, we have Jason Peace in the house. What's up, Jason? Alicia's here. Hello, Alicia. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. Yeah, we got the whole crowd here. It's very cool. We got a lot of stuff going on, Jeff. So let's dig right in. I don't know that we have some that much breaking news, but obviously that's usually where we start. Uh, so yeah. yeah, let's get into the breaking news. Um, trying to think really what is out there as far as breaking news is concerned. 
I didn't really see too much over the past few days. I know we're, we're getting some more matches and stuff for Mania, of course. Um, you know, you're, you're starting to, the, to fill in the rest of that card around uh, what is going to be a tremendous couple of main events uh, and stuff like that. And, and uh, yeah, I don't know, Jeff. I, can you think of anything really breaking off the top of your head? Because I don't know. I really didn't see much on the, on the, uh, on the Twitter or the X over the last couple of days. Um, <clears throat> I haven't seen a lot. Um, I'm trying to think. I, I did see a photo earlier on Instagram where um, the, it was uh, the machine guns in front of a New Japan Pro Wrestling sign, and, uh, and it was Josh Alexander with them saying um, something to the effect of, and, you know, here's kudos to, to the machine guns or something like that. Something to that effect. I don't know, but um, it, it, it was out there on Josh's Instagram. So, again, you know, we brought that up Thursday, <clears throat> basically, you know, not really knowing what their status is right now, but hearing the rumors that their contracts are coming up and who knows what happened. Yeah, let me see. I've, um, I'm looking at his Instagram right now, actually. I have Josh's Instagram pulled up. Um, at least I think this is, yeah, it has 23,000 followers. Let me see what we got here. Um, oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, New Japan Pro Wrestling. If the, what Jeff's talking about is right there. So there you could see uh, the New Japan tag and, and Josh standing right next to them. Of course, liked it, and he said, here's to the Motor City Machine Guns. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, that's uh, – man, that'll be rough um, if those two leave. I, I, I Like I said, I was hoping they would retire uh, in TNA. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, I, I know that um, – yeah, listen, we all know what happened with Scott, um, and we all know that, you know, look, I, I've had – I've done this. In my own career, I've had people do it um, in my career that I worked with. Um, when a boss leaves that they really like, hell, I, there was a time I can give an example. Um, I, I had a really good group of people that worked for me in a Radio Shack store that I worked in. Um, and I decided that it wasn't for me anymore. Um, the, 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 my, my supervisor was, was horrible and I had just had enough one day. Uh, and I, I, this is the only time I've ever done this in my life, but I literally took the keys uh, and I brought them in and I, I left them on the desk. I already had, I had acquired another job and I'm like, I'm out. And I gave no notice. I didn't call anyone. I, I was done. I just had had enough. Um, and literally the entire rest of the staff, save one person, uh, left with me. They, they all walked out. So that happens. And unfortunately, we may see this, Jeff, with some of these people that are in TNA. Once their contracts are up, they might be persuaded to maybe want to go elsewhere. And it sucks. Yeah. Um, but that when somebody is well liked, this is what happens sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's tough because, I mean, you think about the machine guns, you think about Alex Shelley and Chris Saban individually and you automatically link them with TNA and impact and, you know, for them not to end their careers there fully, um, is definitely something I never thought I'd see, but, um, but I'm pretty sure that Scott Demore, um, not being there probably has something to do with that. Um, and I know, you know, I, in the, in the chat, I've seen some rumblings about Killer Kelly as well. Looks like they got that that cleared up, I guess. Um, so, you know, they, I think they're going to lose some more people before it's all said and done. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, uh, for those of us who follow TNA um, closely, but again, you know, I, I think it'll be interesting to see what the new game plan is going forward i'm i'm willing to give it a chance but i will say that i'm a little little nervous at some of the folks that are leaving honestly yeah yeah and you really don't i mean that, that, you know josh and and uh and scott are, are pretty close <clears throat> yeah and yeah. uh so obviously giselle shaw and her the relationship with scott too you know I, look it's it just is what it is um people don't it's it's funny and and all throughout you know your guys' careers and, and jobs that you guys have had, um, people don't tend to work necessarily for a company. They work for other people. 
Um, and when when they're you know and they when they enjoy that other person and they and they like what they do uh, and they feel they have their back, they're going to work for them as opposed to necessarily Anthem and the big company. So um, so yeah, it's uh, it's a it's a it's a sticky situation. Um, and you know I, I don't want to see it happen, but I wouldn't be like Jeff said at all surprised if uh, if they did lose some people. So. Um, uh, I'm also glad they cleared the Killer Kelly contract stuff, says Conrad. So obviously they cleared that up. Um, to quote Sammy Callahan, good job, Anthem, good job. I saw on TikTok there's talk about the Dudley boys coming back. They may make an appearance, I would imagine, just because it's Philadelphia. I wouldn't be surprised um, because WrestleMania is in Philly. Uh, Bully Ray already said he's going to be there with the Busted Open crew. Uh, so I wouldn't be at all surprised uh, if, if that happened or if they made an appearance there. I mean, that is their home. So MK Ultra debuted in Wrestling Revolver two weeks ago. Uh, Shelly talked about living with a new management, uh, living with new management. So I can't believe it is because of the more. Um, they signed Legends contracts already and got new Mattel figures coming out. Nice. Very cool. All right. So that is all the breaking news, which is good. You know, sometimes no news is good news. We don't have a lot of gossip and all that kind of crap going on. So that's good. So and let's. Joe, uh, I, wanted, I wanted to show this photo. Uh, I told Seth to uh, send us the, uh, the, the tattoo. Oh, okay. Oh, that's oh. cool, dude. That's very cool, man. I like it. it. Cool. I dig it. Very well done. Very yep. well done. Nice. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Well, that's uh that's kind of a segue because yep, we're gonna that's... talk a little bit about that right now. So yep. we're moving yep. on. Yep, we're gonna bring that up right now, talking about our uh our good friend um Bray Wyatt and uh, what WWE is is doing. So, um, so yeah, we've got a documentary set to release on Peacock on uh, April first, Joe. Documentary and now a panel. Uh, there's going to be a panel at WrestleMania as well that fans can go and, and check out and see. Um, we haven't talked about this, I know, and um, you know, I, you know, with Jody and obviously we we're, you know, we was going to was going to touch on it. Um, a lot more. Um, I can only say a few things. One, um, you know, thrilled that this is, that this is happening and, it, and it's coming out. Uh, he deserves this. Um, and uh, the other thing is, that it's going to be very, very hard watch. Very, very hard watch. Um, you know, you saw some stuff that already with the, the, the picture with Bo looking at the table with Bray's masks is heartbreaking. Um, and much of it's going to be, and it's going to be a very, very difficult watch uh, for a lot of people. I do, though, also believe, Jeff, that – and we – I don't know if you – you know, remember back to the tribute episode when we had Kyle on for the very last time. Yeah. Um, and obviously Kyle isn't working for wrestling anymore. He did announce that, so they're – you know. Um, but Kyle had mentioned that at some point, sometime, um, they're going to tell the story that Bray wanted us to know. And I think this is going to be it. I think we're going to get looks from the inside on this. Um, yeah. We did see that fiend costume, uh, which is hellacious, by the way. The 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 cutout looked like a cenobite almost uh, from from Hellraiser with the cutout burned mouth out, and, and you know people are speculating. You know, we don't know. We don't know until we're going to hear about it. We don't know if that was going to be the new look. I mean, it seemed as if it was because he's holding a lantern that is in the, the shape of the fiend's head, saying mm -hmm. that, okay, the fiend is gone and, and buried. He's he's done. I'm moving on, just like he had the, the head of his other character. Uh, so it does seem like that's maybe what was happening. Um, but we're going to probably find out a lot about this. And, uh, and Jeff, I, I, you know, for Bray's sake and, and, um, God rest his soul. Uh, and for all of us, the, his fans, his family, um, I'm glad this is being done. Um, and, and I'm glad they are going to give us that little bit of inside information and inside look. Um, he deserves it, Jeff. Uh, you know, he's such a, was such a great guy. And, you know, listen to this day, um, I never have seen a loyal a fan base, I don't think, to any one wrestler. In, and I'm talking living through Hulk Hogan years and living through some of the other big – I have never seen. They showed the documentary for this. I almost teared up. They showed that the, they showed the ad for the documentary inside the building on Raw, and they lit up their phones like a Christmas tree. Everyone in that place lit their phones up 
I mean, it's insane. He just had a, a, an unbelievable fan base. Um, you all know our story, and the reason why we even got together is is thanks to Bray Wyatt. So um, this is going to be tremendous. Um, we are gonna we're gonna all discuss as a family here um, as to what we're going to do about this. Definitely, there will be coverage on Abby's, of course, for it, uh, one way or another. I know I did stick a poll out there because I wanted to get all of your thoughts um, because we had talked about, and I know Jody had mentioned the possibility of a watch along um, that's going to have to be worked out either way, because we don't know when it's going to drop. Um, they may not drop it until after raw that night. Uh, it's on a Monday, I believe. So if that's the case, it's not going to drop until like 11, 12 o'clock. It's going to be a little too late. Um, and so I, you know, so I, the poll you guys voted pretty overwhelmingly that you'd want it. Um, but we're, we're going to have to look into it and see how it goes. Um, at the very, at the very least, it, you know, if it can't be done and I know if it comes out at 11, 12 o'clock, you guys, including myself and Jeff and everybody else are going to watch it. We're just going to watch it at that time, but it is a little bit late to be doing a watch along. So if that happens, you know, then it's too late to do a watch along the very next day. So then at that point, we'll probably just have a, have a special edition of Abby's, uh, where we'll just all you know, uh, talk about it and, uh, and stuff. So yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's going to be a tough watch, Jeff, but I'm, I'm very glad they're doing it. I'm really hoping, I'm hoping, uh, that we get some sort of surprise announcement after this show. And I don't know that's going to happen. There's people saying yes, people saying no. Um, it's all rumor right now, but I'm hoping that something gets announced whether it be at the end saying that he's going into the Hall of Fame this year when his dad will be there or whether it's going to be at some other point and they just announced that, he, you know, hey, he is going to be going into the Hall of Fame. And uh, if it's not this year, I'm fine with that, Jeff, because it's up to the family and what they can what they can really deal with and take. So it may be a little too hard right now on his wife and his children. And if that's the case, obviously, you know, wait until the right time. Uh, but, but yeah, I'm, uh, I, I'm, I, I'm very grateful that we're going to get to see this inside look. Um, people are going to get excited, Jeff. I know they're, they're going to, you know, maybe possibly think that maybe Bo will take over. Uh, I'm not so sure about that. I don't know. I honestly don't know. We'll see. But uh, in any case, Jeff, I, I'm, I'm very glad we're going to get to see this. Yeah, me too. And I, I think um, I, I was reading something somewhere where a person mentioned closure. And that's not the right term because there's never going to be closure, um, really, because, um, you know, this was a, a person who lost their life and passed away way too young, yeah, uh, yeah. as it seems to happen. Um, but, you know, I, I think that this will be a good opportunity to folk, for folks to see things that went on to develop his characters and gimmicks and to see where he was possibly going next. And I think that's, you know, something that people want to see. There's always that question of what well, I wonder where it was going next. And I think um, we may get a chance to see some of that. And, you know, to your, to your point about the hall of fame, I just want to say this and I'm, I say this respectfully to uh, fans of Bray Wyatt. Um, his induction into the hall of fame is not up to us. Right. It's up to his family. Yep. And when they feel comfortable with it and when WWE feels comfortable with it, uh, whether that happens this year or next year, um, I think at this point, the fact that we are getting this documentary is something that's special. Um, something that I had hoped that we'd get, but wasn't sure but I'm glad that we're getting it. And the timing of it is, is very interesting too. They could have released this after Coach WrestleMania, Coach. but I think that it's intentional. Um, I, I truly believe, you know, when it comes to his induction into the hall of fame, I almost don't want him to go in this year because I kind of want him to go in as the headliner, um, when he goes in. And, um, you know, I think, this year, they've, they've got a lot of great uh, names and people going into the Hall of Fame. Uh, why not have him headline next year um, and really build it around him and his legacy and 
you know, just kind of following up on this documentary a little bit, I think will be a, a special touch. But um, again, you know, I, I'm glad that we're getting this. I know it's going to be a tough watch um, for many different reasons, but um, you know, again, we'll keep everyone posted on, on what we do. Um, but yeah, um, Conrad saying it doesn't have to be instant. Um, it has to be special when they put Bray into the Hall of Fame. Completely, 100% agree. Yeah. Completely agree. I think it has to be special. I think it has to be done in a way that pays tribute to his memory and, and legacy. Um, but I think it gives, like James Chadwick just said, Bray going in next year is better because it gives us all a reason to talk and celebrate Bray all over again. And Another thing that Joe brought up is it gives his children one more year to grow yeah. and and really embrace that impact that their father made. So I, I yeah. think um, I, I understand being a little upset that he didn't go in this year and didn't go in right away. But again, you have to think about the family and what they need and what they want as opposed to what us as fans want. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I love the title um, and the title would lead you to believe uh, that maybe just maybe, you know, they, they did say uh, in one of those trailers uh, that Bray Wyatt uh, will live on forever. So I don't know, you know, maybe, maybe Bo will take up the mantle. Maybe we don't know, you know, look, uh, uh, you know, uh, we, we all know what Alexa Bliss did, right. When Bray wasn't around, Alexa's going to return at some point too. So you know who knows? Maybe that's what they mean by becoming immortal. Maybe this 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 will continue somehow, some way, uh, by by someone else. Um, and uh, you know, and Bo, man, Bo is uh, Bo's getting to look a little more like Bray. Uh, the more I've yeah. seen him, uh, I've seen him in those videos, and you know the, the ads for this, and Bo's getting to look a little more like Bray too. Um, so we'll see, we'll see. But it's I think it's a, it's a great thing. I think that. Um, you know, it's it's going to be great to watch it and uh, and to hear, you know, from people like Jason Baker, who is absolutely devastated. You know, we all have to remember we lost a we lost a uh, a person who was very important to us in Bray Wyatt because of his in ring work. Uh, Jason Baker lost the best friend. Uh, he literally was best friends with Bray, um, and he and you know his his part in that when he said he, he wished he could have said thank you to him uh, for everything that he did for him uh, through the years. So uh, it's going to be tough. It's going to be a tough watch, no doubt. But uh, but yeah, I'm I'm glad it's I'm glad it's happening. I'm glad they announced it, and um, yeah. So we'll see. Um, all right. It's going to be interesting to see behind the scenes footage of what the Fiend character uh, and especially the part of the trailer where Bo is looking at the masks and Lantern. Yeah, that's a sad part. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Um, probably better next year so they can focus on the 40th this year. Yeah. I, you know, Jeff makes a lot of good points there. Uh, a lot of good points because things, you know, uh, it's getting enough attention with all the stuff with, with the main events, the double main events and things that they're doing there. Um Cody and, and Roman, of course, and stuff like that are going to be there for fan signings and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it, you know, we'll, I'm sure we're going to hear, you know, when the panel does happen, uh, you know, they'll they'll talk more probably a little bit about that uh, as to who is going to be at the panel and stuff like that. So, yeah. All right. Good deal. Uh, let's go and uh, move on, Jeff. What's uh, what's up next? Well, we talked a little bit about uh, Cody and, and the bloodline and all of that. So we'll bring them up now. And I, Joe, I want to bring this point up because I don't think enough people are talking about it. You know, there is one person that's going into the Hall of Fame this year. That's a part of this, and that's Paul Heyman. Yes. And we all know if we've known Paul Heyman, you've been following him long enough, you know he can be a little bit of a weasel. Yep. So, uh, you know, I think that Paul Heyman might play more into this matchup and and story than folks are giving credit to. Hmm. Hmm. I think he may factor into some things at WrestleMania. It's uh this this has been just interesting back and forths here. Um the uh the the Cody thing uh from Raw and then you know what I'm hearing a lot of people are saying that, is that they're they're not they're thinking Cody is being a bit too passive, 
um, that he's, you know, but, but he's, he's acting the face. He's being the better man, so to speak. He's, he's not being the name caller. He's not being, you know, he's being that all time, nice baby face. That's, you know, saying, Hey, I, I you know, I, I, all the kids are going to want to grow up like Roman Reigns and, you know, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. He's, he's saying the good things, right? Roman's the one that's taking the low road. Um, and I don't know, this is, the story has just, I mean, it's just insane. The story is just crazy um, as to where this is going to go. Um, I, I'm i telling you, uh, well, wait, <laughs> I listened to, uh, I was listening to a show and uh, uh, it was, I, it was Mark Henry, I think. Uh, and uh, Mark Henry, I think was on Busted Open. Someone was talking on Busted Open about, um, oh, their producer. The producer was actually saying, uh, and Mark Henry was saying that he feels that the end of this match, you're going to have just a mishmash of everyone coming down because you're going to see like Romans, the bloodline come down. You're going to see like all those guys we saw with Seth the other night come down. And he said, and I, and then his producer said, what if, what if Triple H comes down with the sledgehammer? And he said, could you imagine? If he bashed Cody Rhodes with that sledgehammer because of what Cody did to him and said to him all these years ago, and and then and then, <laughs> and then and then Mark Henry's like, "Don't put that thought in my head. Don't be putting them thoughts in my head. I don't want to hear that." He goes, <laughs> and so there's so many things that could happen with this the wheel spinning here, and I just keep going back, just keep going back. Because of everything you're seeing, and now Cody's trying to play rock and roll and off one another, I just keep going back to that whisper in Cody's ear the night that The Rock came down and was going to start this whole process of him and Roman Reigns. I go back to that every single time. And I wonder, is Rock playing a game? Is, Co you know, does, is Cody in on it? Does he know what's going on? Or is it just going to be a deal where The Rock just simply is going to turn on Roman, which is going to, I, th I think, happen either way. Uh, either way that they shoot it, I think that's how it's going to go. The Rock is going to turn on Roman. Maybe Roman belts The Rock. Maybe it's as simple as this. In the tag team match, we know this happens all the time in tag team wrestling, right? They go to Somebody gets knocked into somebody else inadvertently. Maybe that's what happens. Maybe The Rock gets knocked into Roman or vice versa. One of them hits the other, and then that's going to set off the fuse. Um, and then maybe when you, when you picture like night two, when all this goofy, crazy chaos is going on, all of a sudden, Rock's music hits, and you're like, oh, shit. Rock's going to come down and beat the snot out of Cody, and he comes down and beats up Roman. Uh, and that's the final straw. Cody ends up – but nobody's going to want him to cause uh, Cody to win, but maybe just maybe he comes down and does just a you know, little something to Roman. Uh, or, or I don't know, but it just seems like it's going that way. This is – Twists and turns everywhere, Jeff. It's a great storyline between these two. Uh, I still will stand by the fact that if they do not give Cody this belt, man, Philadelphia is going to burn. Uh, I'm, I'm, gonna, yeah, I'm just going to stand by that. That's the one thing. Uh, I'm not going to get upset like I did last year because I'm, I don't know what to expect anymore. Um, I, you know, I don't know what to expect and wrestling is very unexpected sometimes. So I just don't know. Uh, but I, I could just say that don't mess with Philadelphia and play with their emotions. Cause that is not one city that you want to screw around with. <laughs> yeah, there are a couple of cities that you don't want to screw around in and Philadelphia would definitely be categorized, um, is one, but uh, like RK Shuttleworth is saying here, folks is wrestling. It's entertainment. It's supposed yeah. to be fun. Don't go out and commit crimes and do oh something. Yeah, right. Get right. what you want to happen. Um, I mean, let's be honest. You you'd get it anyway, and then in six months you'd be against it. So, um, sorry, sorry, not sorry. Um, but that's how wrestling fans are sometimes, right? We ask for something, we ask for something, and then we get it. And it's like, oh, this isn't how we wanted it. This isn't. This isn't what we need right now. This is boring. This sucks. So I give people like six months before they start going against the whole Cody thing if he does win uh, at, at WrestleMania. But I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, we have a, 
our burning question of the week is actually surrounding all of the possibilities of things that could happen. Um, and I'm, I'm starting to think that when we get to that, I might, I might be, I don't think this person may be overreacting. I don't know, but we'll see when we get there. But, um, James saying Cody needs to win without interference, uh, in the actual match. Otherwise people will say Cody's title win is tainted. I agree with that. I agree with that. Um, Gus is saying that he's going to night two. Oh, nice. So oh, you good. enjoy that Gus. You have yeah, a good man. time. Uh, cause I think it's going to be awesome. I, I'll say this though. I don't want them. I don't want WWE to, to do a, to do what we see in some horror movies sometimes where you get a twist and then to try and make it cooler, you throw in another twist. Yeah. And then to swerve the fans again, you get another twist. I don't want to see that. I, I want to see it, you know, play out definitively and not in a way that makes it like, oh, well, you, I mean, you like overbooked the heck out of that. I don't, I don't want to see that kind of story play out, but I do. I want to see, I think we'll get at least one twist. I think we'll get something where we're like, oh, okay, well, we didn't see that coming, but uh, I don't want it to be just overly done, you know, yeah. because I think that kind of takes away from the brilliance of the storyline, the way that has been done over the last several years. And I can't even believe I'm saying that in 2024 that we've been dealing with, we've been seeing one storyline play out over the course of what, four years at this point. Yeah, 1,300 yeah. days Roman's yeah. had that title. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy, man. It's it crazy. Is. So, it is. Um, I will say kudos to WWE for keeping this thing going and not, not making us feel stupid and not just completely forgetting about the people that have been involved throughout the way because I think they make it interesting. I think Seth being involved makes it very very interesting so uh so yeah i'm really i'm excited to see how they play this out but i just don't want it to be overdone yeah yeah uh nick nemeth uh who's i guess been part of busted open lately he's he's on there a lot now i uh, was talking about it and he was saying that you know if they do have the chaos right if they do have and he said he fully thinks they will they'll they're they're at some point you're going to get the rock down there you're going to get uh, the bloodline down there you're going to get seth down there you're going to get all that but he said that should all do what it's going to do and then clear out of there and then let them be in the ring for like the last 10 minutes with nothing. Everybody clears all out. They get all the fighters. They, you know, they chase each other around the building. They go over the stands, whatever they're going to do. Um, but he said, get them all out of there and then have it just be Roman and, uh, and Cody at the end. Because oh, yeah. I think a lot of people are forgetting about this. Is Damian Priest? Yep. So many people may not be thinking about Dam. Now Damian could very well cash his in during the Seth and uh, and Drew match because that's he's from Raw, so they they might keep him involved in that. Um, but don't forget that little thing too, where he could end up coming down uh, after all of this going on, and then Cody. Could you imagine that? Could you you want to talk about a riot? <laughs> Could you imagine if Cody won? Oh, had the belt for like three seconds, and then he comes out and pulls a moose, like Moose did to Josh, Dang. and then turns around and gets a referee and snakes him, and then wins it off of Cody. Oh my god! So <laughs> I had I have a friend of mine who hasn't been you know as consistent with watching wrestling in a while, but the bloodline stuff has gotten him back into wrestling. Um, he, he actually said, he texted me that he was like, he says, I'm calling it now. Cody wins, looks all triumphant. And then all of a sudden you hear the judgment day music. Hit. <laughs> oh my God. Damian Priest comes down, cashes in. <laughs> Damian Priest holds up the title at the end of it. Ensue chaos. And I'm like, yeah, that's oh. basically what would happen. Oh, you want, God. you want to talk about Damian. Pri so at that point, would Dom get booed more or would Damien get booed more? Oh, no, I think Damien would take over as the, 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 
He would be the biggest booed person in that business for a long time if he did that. Yeah. People would probably throw trash at him uh, oh, like yeah. they did when Hogan turned. Because that, oh my God, you want to create yourself a heel? There you go. Uh, do that because, man, he I don't know if he'd get out of that ring without getting hit oh. with stuff. Uh, so yeah, dude, <laughs> I don't know that, but that, you know, that's, that's, what's great about this. And like Jeff was saying it, th- what's cool about it is, and maybe this is what we're going to get now in the new era, right? Um, it's not as predictable as everybody thinks it might be because while I'm under the impression that Cody is, is, is going to win. And I think a lot of people are as well. There's going to be a lot of stuff along the way, uh, where you are going to lose doubt. You're or not. You're gonna get. You're gonna have doubts, and yep. those those little doubts are what's gonna keep this all interesting. So, um, yeah, I, I I like it. Uh, and and Jeff, I guess if this is gonna be it for Roman, um, you know, we're never gonna see probably. We may never see anything like this again. Um, and if this is gonna be it for him, um, the one thing that people are, you know. I know people are, are kind of tired of it a little bit maybe now, but um, the one thing you got to say is this. He was an event, Jeff. And no matter when you went to see him, uh, at any pay-per-view that you go to, he is an event. He was like seeing Andre back in the day or like seeing you know these, these people who don't wrestle very much. And once he goes... Um, you know, you're that old saying, sometimes you don't know what you've got till it's gone. It's gone. Um, and yeah. when he decides he's going to go away and step away a little bit, um, we probably won't see him very much. He may go into doing some acting. He may do some other stuff outside the business. Um, and yeah, so you got to remember what the man did for the sport uh, and 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 what he became and what the bloodline was. So um, so yeah, kudos to him and and, and everything for for holding that title uh, as long as he had. And you know you got to remember too. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of him, but this man fought back from cancer uh, and leukemia. And, and so you know, look, it's 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 a hell of an accomplishment uh, for somebody who may never wrestled again. Uh, so yeah, so there you go. Yeah, and I I think too, you know, to that to that point, um, I think as wrestling fans, sometimes we get so caught up in how we want things booked, and we talk about you know, oh, this person's being overused, and they're being this, and they're being that, and you think about it, and you know, I was looking back at some stats and stuff. Um, there was a little video that popped up of different title reigns um, throughout the 2000s. And I know folks always bring up, and and I hate to even bring up his name, but Brock Lesnar and talking about, well, he always has the title. If you look at the number of times he had it, he really didn't. It was just the timing in which he had it and when, in which he got the shot, I think, that people had a problem with. But folks, I don't think folks appreciate Roman nearly enough. I think for where he was at the start of the pandemic and how people thought of him and it's like, okay, well, is he seen a 2.0? Is he, you know, is he just getting pushed just because, just because he's got a certain look, whatever. And for him to basically change his entire character and become this heel that, I mean, honestly, dude is just at a different level. And I'm loving the fact that they're allowing him to do this. And I mean, even watching him on like talk shows and different appearances, he's just, he's just got this cool factor, even though he's supposed to be this bad guy, you just want to be like, man, but that's so cool. I mean, I just feel like fans, sometimes they dog people out when they're on top. And then when they're gone, they're like, man, but do you remember back? when he did this and and i think that'll be the case i think people are they've reached their limit with roman but two to three years from now when he's off making you know fast and furious 17 and (laughs) uh, (laughs) and doing whatever he's doing in hollywood people will be like man you know i really wish that that roman was back because do you remember that time with him in the bloodline i mean i think people will be doing that in years to come so yeah he he played a great villain man he just yeah. did and uh, like cerebral villain too he's, he's not just one of these villains that just uh you know uh, 
like a bully Ray, completely different, very cerebral. Even in that conversation he had with Cody, uh, everything is very well thought out. Um, and he never, he, he reminds me if you're, if you're a, if you're a Marvel fan or a comic book fan, reminds me very much of the Kingpin. Uh, in Marvel Comics, because and especially the way D'Onofrio plays him in the Daredevil series and stuff, just very cool, very calm uh, until he does. When he gets angry, uh, you better look out because he's busting heads. Uh, and that's what happens with Roman. Uh, he, he just is cool. He's calm. And, and, and when he talks, you know, very astute with what he says, uh, very to the point. Uh, I, I mean, looks at, Ro at Cody right in the face and says he's stupid. He said, you must be stupid. I mean, that's just <laughs> who's going to talk yeah. like that to Cody Rhodes and get away with it. Um, so, yeah, it's just it was just it was just amazing. And the fact that it lasted this long uh, as it has uh, is is no small feat uh, for wrestling today because no. people do not have patience. Uh, well, can I bring up something to you about yeah. Rome? You yeah. remember the last few that we saw him in before he made this change? You remember what it was? I remember the last person he lost to was Baron Corbin. Yep, um, that's exactly what I was going to bring up. You remember okay. the whole dog, the dog food thing on SmackDown? Oh my God! Yeah, when he got covered with that can of of stuff. What he, was the the what dog was food the, thing? Yeah, and what was the the response from everyone? Man, Roman deserves so much better. I really wish they do that, something yeah. different. With, and then <laughs> and then he hits this stride, and people are like, man, this is getting so boring. Make up your flipping mind. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. now, he's at, now he's at the top. And, you know, then it was like, man, you know, he, he's dealing with Baron Corbin and slipping and sliding in dog food. Yep. yep. And, and, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I was not a fan of that dog food crap. I'll, yep. I'll just go ahead and say it. It was funny in some spots, but they, they just went, they just went uh, a little too far with it, I think. But. But now, I mean, you think about the juxtaposition from where he was to where he is now, and it's just crazy. But it just goes to show, man, like, fans will ask for something, they get it, and then it's like, oh, we, we don't want it like this. So, <laughs> Yeah, I'll tell you, when he looks back at his career in, you know, somewhere down the road, and when he does one of these videos and stuff and looks back at his career, he's probably going to look at that moment and say, you know what, this was it. That, like, that, that dog food thing i'd had it uh, that that was that i went right in and said all right we're done uh, this is changing uh and and i'm done with this uh, you know people hit that kind of thing in their career and it you know it's rock bottom sometimes and uh and yeah yeah a lot of people probably forgot about that but it's uh man it's it's great it's uh it's it's great stuff it really is and like i said completely out of the blue that it lasted this long because and and it very well may be the case where we never see anything like this again. And because very much what Jeff was saying and people just don't have the patience for it. They don't have the patience for that long stuff. They want, I, I often call, I often say this and I'm sorry if I, I don't mean to offend anyone who's young, that's out there listening, but I call your generation, the Veruca salt generation. <laughs> I want it all. And I want it now. That is where the way I look at your generation sometimes um, as, as that. So, um, and that's, that's what it seems to be, you know, with the, with the, we talk about with the, uh, the, the rumors and the dirt sheets and everything else out there that, that's, that puts all this stuff out there. It's all part of that. You want it now, you want it now, you want it now. So, um, yeah, I don't know if we'll ever see this again, but, um, uh, but yeah, like I said, you know, um, enjoy it because once it's over, you know, that's, uh, we're going to move on and we're going to go on to something completely different. So good stuff. Whole dog food stuff was complete horse shit, says James Chadwick. Roman's going to eat the food, Michael Cole. <laughs> Our view, look at bonus baby remembers. Um, uh, the thing is, WWE finally allowing him to be himself with the volume turned up just like they did with The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin. I, I told you guys, I was not a Roman fan, uh, not at all. And I think more people may not have been so adverse to him had he not had he not beat well he didn't pin him but had he not beaten bray that was maybe not the person you want to take the title off of if anyone was out there but and i think a lot of people that are big bray fans still they remember that um and because bray Wyatt fans never forget uh so so yeah but moving on good stuff i love it so let's go on what's next jeff all right, up next, 
Um, let me go past some of this because I had some photos there. But we got a uh, a debut. We did. Um, in AEW, uh, the CEO Mercedes Monet. Yes, Monet. She looks fantastic. Uh, and uh, she looks absolutely happy to be there. Um, of course, she debuted in her hometown, which was the best place she could do. Uh, that, you know, and obviously she's gonna fit right into some stuff. What here's here's what I'm liking about this is uh, they're opening the show with the women. They're ending the show with the women. Okay, fantastic. I've been calling for that. I've been I've been screaming to the heavens on this show for that for months and months and months. We've been doing it. Um, I want to see it continue, but I don't want to. But I want to see it continue also with the other women as well, uh, not just Mercedes. I want to see it continue with the other women as well because now you're starting to see that people are watching this. They're interested. They're interested in the women's wrestling. And yes, I'm sure a lot of them are Mercedes fans and they're interested in her because she's so popular. However, I'm sure they're interested in the others as well. Listen, we had a, we, we saw Thunder Rosa return to the ring, which was fantastic. She looked great. Um, so they have got some amazing women over there. Deanna Peraza, we all know who she is. Uh, from those of you who, that watch TNA with us, um, Dr. Britt Baker obviously is out injured, but she's supposed to be coming back at some point soon. Um, they have a lot of very, very talented women over there. Um, Willow Nightingale, love her. Um, you know, so many people, Riho, a lot of, a lot of talent there. And I, and I want to see more. I want to see more. I want to see more. It's time to get the women involved. Um, we all know that, you know, we're big fans. Jeff and I are of impact for that very reason. Um, but Jeff, I mean, she's going to do nothing but but uh, but uh, better that women's division. Uh, the fact that, you know, all eyes are on her. Uh, they're getting people to come out and watch because she is indeed there. Uh, and I have no doubt that she's going to get involved with that women's title uh, very much sooner than later. Yeah, and I think I think Conrad brings up a good point. I have not yeah. seen I haven't seen uh, this last uh, dynamite. So. I didn't get a chance to see it this weekend, but the last two that I saw absolutely spectacular. Yep. Um, you know, I, I think they've been they've hit their stride. We were waiting on them. And I think if you're you know, if you're kind of down the middle middle and fair, I think you can say that they had hit a little bit of a lull at one point. But now I think they're really hitting their stride. And I think they're finding what works for them. And I think that's the most important thing is that you can't, you can't be anyone but yourself. So do what you can do to make your product stand out. And I think that's what they're doing. So again, you know, I think they're, they're going to have the opportunity to showcase the talent throughout their women's roster. And and that's what I think gets lost in all of this. Yeah, we have Mercedes Monet there now, and that's great. And she's gonna demand some time, and that's a good thing. But I think I think at at the other side of that, it also gives other women on that roster a chance to shine because they're gonna get more opportunities because honestly, they're gonna have more demanded of them, and that's that's a good thing. And uh, kudos to them for, you know, for showcasing the women more. And I think that's only going to increase as you get, you know, like you mentioned, uh, Britt Baker back and um, you, you start to build some more storylines there. And, and don't forget, you got folks like Sky Blue, you got Julia Hart, you've got so many talented people there on that roster that I think deserves, you know, some some kudos. and. Again, you know, I think you got you got to get. We can be critical when things are off, mm -hmm. and I think when things are good, we we've got to you know praise those moments too. And like Conrad said, don't move the goalpost um, because you know people have been clamoring for a while. Hey, improve your women's division, yep. make it better. They've done that. Okay, so don't come up with something next week. Well, you know they never do this now. Don't don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Don't be that person. Uh, give them the kudos that they deserve because they've been knocking it out of the park. And if if this last week's dynamite was anywhere near where I think it was based on 
some of the comments that I've heard uh, from people that have watched it, then I feel like they're they're really hitting that stride now. So kudos to them. Yeah, there's been some great stuff. Like I said, and I I don't get to watch much. I tuned in for that I quit match. Phenomenal, phenomenal match. Uh, wonderful match. The things they did, uh, Edge and and, uh, and and Christian. The things they did, uh, phenomenal. Loved it. Um, and then of course uh, the was it Riho and and Willow that wrestled mm-hmm. the one that was amazing. A tremendous match between those two. Uh, so yeah, they're they're really starting. Oh, and by the way, um, Will Osprey, good God, what a pickup he was! What a pickup he was! That man comes down, he can cut a promo, dude. Worth uh, the price of admission, right? Oh my gosh, uh, he 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 comes down and just like you know, on the mic when he gets that mic and he's got that whole crowd eating out of his hands, he is fantastic. Um, that was a huge, huge get for them. Um, and, uh, and he's been, he's been phenomenal, uh, absolutely phenomenal. So yeah, it's uh, look, I like it. Um, yeah, the, the talking about the risk of turning Okada heel. Yeah. A lot of people didn't really see that coming. Um, they'll, they'll make that work with the young bucks and you can already kind of see it because they're translating for him. Uh, they're kind of talking for him. You can also kind of see that, is he going to take that for a very long time from them? And it almost kind of looks like that's what it's going to be. Yeah, he's he going to be with them for a little while and everything like that. But at some point, you can see it already being brewed up that he may turn on them because just because of the fact that, you know, they are his mouthpiece, so to speak, and they're talking for him. They can easily turn them against each other at some point. So, um, yeah, it's it's been it's been really good. It's been really, really fun to watch lately. Uh, kudos to them. And, uh, yeah, uh, you know, I, I, I absolutely love it. Uh, and uh, we're seeing more of the women now. And if that's what Mercedes is doing uh, to help them along, we all know we're probably getting Mercedes against Tony Storm, uh, which is going to be a fantastic match. Uh, and more than likely, Mercedes, I would think, would win the title at that point. So uh, it's going to be great. And, uh, yeah, they're doing good things, Jeff. They really are. And uh, I really like where this is going with Mercedes. I've always liked her. And it doesn't matter where the person is. It doesn't matter if she's no longer in one company or the other. She's still the person. Uh, and, and I've liked her when she was in WWE, I've, I've caught her some of her matches from new Japan and, uh, and look, I, she was fantastic in the Mandalorian too. Uh, so, you know, I just like the person. So she's succeeding. She's doing well. And AEW has been doing well as well, Jeff. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. All right, Uh, man. Well, let's, let's go to, uh, to the segment that folks, Oh, you want to go to that one? Yeah, let's do that. You all know what we're talking about here. We've got a segment that everybody tends to really like in this show. Uh, We're going to go to it right now. This is called, if you are new to the show, we've got 100 people watching right now. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, This is called The Airing of Grievances. So let's go. The Airing of Grievances. (laughs) I got a lot of problems with you people. (laughs) Now you're going to hear about Man, it makes me laugh every single time we come to this segment. I love it. I love it. I love it. God rest his soul, man. Was a, he was, Jerry Stiller was a funny dude. Um, and uh, on, on all the Seinfeld and King of Queens, of course, is absolutely hilarious. Um, thank you for uh, – look at, look at all these people we got here, man. This is awesome. We're getting a lot of people here on Sunday nights now. Thank you all uh, for watching. If you're watching from YouTube, please make sure you drop a like on the stream tonight. Please make sure if you're watching from any other place, whether it be Twitch, follow us there if you haven't. If you're watching us from Twitter, uh, X, yeah, Twitter, whatever they want to call it. Um, share it. Uh, make sure you retweet the stream, and that'll help us out on there too. So thank you all. That's amazing, man. It's a big crowd. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We appreciate you. Uh, we got a super chat a little bit back too. I want to before we go into this. Uh, let me see if I could find that. Thank you so much. Who was it? Um, there you go. Mike Thomas, Mike Thomas. Thank you very much, Mike, for the super chat. We appreciate it. Uh, put the belt on Tasha Steels. Tasha's awesome. And Tasha just had a great match uh, with uh, Jordan Grace this past Thursday. Uh, she is fantastic. Absolutely love Tasha Steeles. Love your comment. And who knows? Maybe they will. Maybe they will at some point. Uh, you know, might not be right away, but maybe Tasha will get her time with that title. She certainly deserves it. All right. So, Jeff, we've got our airing of grievances. Um, <laughs> I'm going to play a little devil's advocate tonight. A little devil's advocate tonight. Uh, on the airing of grievances, and I'm going to tell you why 
I think that maybe Cody Rhodes might be being a little bit too passive, a little too passive uh, with his comments uh, and his and his promos that he's doing. I think he might be holding back just a little too much. Now, I'll start this first by saying this. I know we've got how many weeks have we got left? The uh, three more was it two more three more WrestleManias? When uh when is when? Uh, we got two more Raw. weeks. So we got two more weeks, right? So that's going to be what? Two Raws, two SmackDowns? Or is it two and one? Two Raws and then two and two. Uh, right. two, and two. So we've got four shows left. We know that The Rock is going to make an appearance on Raw on one of them um, because they did advertise that. So, but now this is coming from the last two promos that Cody did. I love Cody Rhodes. I am a big fan of Cody Rhodes. I think he is tremendous. I want him to win that title. You guys all should know that because of how I ranted afterwards of last WrestleMania and I went on for half an hour uh, because of how pissed I was that he lost. So that said, I think to me that – look at this from a – you know, look, it's a wrestling standpoint, but look at this from a, a – a, almost like a real life standpoint, if you could put these two guys in front of each other and you know it's not wrestling. Rock talked about Cody's mom. Now, you know, that's kind of a now Rock was shooting off some low blows and stuff during the whole rock concert before that. But when he told the story about, you know, I'm gonna take my weight belt and I'm gonna beat your son so bad that I'm gonna bloody him up. And then I'm going to take this belt with his blood covered in and I'm going to hand it to you. That's pretty bad, right? That's pretty bad. That's a, you know, you, you say something to somebody about their mom, you're, you're getting, you know, you're really, that, that's, a, that's like the lowest of the low. That you and and for, the, for the Disney fans, then he hit the Maui, you're welcome. Oh, he did. I, yes. lo I love that. I absolutely Dude. love that. And and I I bet Cody if he had been there would want to say this. You stupid dick. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even realize it because I'd seen Moana once a while yeah. back, and and when he goes, "You're welcome," I'm like, "Oh my god!" I, but I mean, he look <laughs> for anyone to stand and try to go toe to toe with the Rock, you're gonna lose. He's he's on another level as far as promos go from anyone from anyone. He's he's amazing at it. He gets practice at it even more because he's an actor as well. He's just damn good at what he does. And so you can probably put just about anybody in wrestling up against him and he's going to make them look bad just because of the fact that he does that. However, after that one with the with the whole going to the point of where he's now he can he can come out and he can make fun of Cody all he wants and and do all the little nuances but when he calls out is you know when he says something like that gets all serious and talks about how he's going to hand his mother a bloody belt that's 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 pretty damn low right i expected Cody on monday to really come at him I really did. I was I was really getting psyched up for Cody's promo on Monday because I thought he was going to come out and start slamming the rock and just did you know be like furious, just just show that anger a little bit to me. I get it. I understand he's the face. I get that, but just come out and just show that anger. Show how pissed off you are. You know, he he used some curse words and stuff, which I, I was fine. That was fine. And I'm not saying his promo was horrible, <laughs> but come out and give me a little more passion. Give You are being threatened by him saying that you are not going to finish your story. He is telling you flat out, you are not coming out of there with that title. And on top of that, he's, he's telling your mom who, you know, and then Cody comes back and he says, well, my mom's tough. My mom punched a guy um, at a race once or however that went and, you know, <laughs> however that story ended up but you know he said my mom you know my mom doesn't take it basically he's saying my mom doesn't take any shit which is fine okay good that that's fantastic but he still he insulted your mother 
Like he basically said he's going to get, could you imagine like my, listen, my mom was, was never any sort of threat to anybody, but if somebody would have said that to her saying, I'm going to bloody your son and hand you that bloody belt, holy crap, would she have been pissed? And I mean, you know, a, a son defending a mom. I remember once in my life, and it's funny because this took me back. I used to play, I played little league baseball and then uh, what they call Babe Ruth baseball, which is the next, uh, next up from little league. And I can remember, um, I had a coach who had just, just nasty, right? Just a, the most rude, you know, ass person that you'd ever want to meet. Um, and I can remember him uh, and I, and I had gotten, I wasn't a very tall kid. I kind of shot up when I was about like 14 or so and, and got to be taller. Um, he was this little short dude and, and stuff. And I remember um, my mom was in the stands and they were saying some, and he, he got into a bit of a, of a, of an altercation. Like with my mom and started saying stuff to my mom, I walked over off the bench. I was 14 years old. He was probably, this, this dude is probably 50 or so years old. I walked up to him and I said, don't ever, ever talk to my mother like that again. And I was a 14 year old kid. I mean, come on, Cody, you've got to show me a little something else. Got to show me a little something, something here. I got to see you get a little pissed. I get it. You're the heel. Heels aren't supposed to necessarily show that you're mad, that you're upset, you know, but man, I, I, I got to see some of that from you. And I don't know what it's going to take. Maybe when Rock comes to Raw and, and confronts him there, I don't know. I don't know what it's going to take, but man, I got to see some of that. I have to see some of that. Um, that That's digging down deep. That's coming out and, and just being a little primal. I want to. I want to see that from Cody. Cody's being the nice guy, and I get it. That's what the heel does. You know, he's complimenting Roman, saying everybody's going to want to be like you, and and then Roman's firing back and calling him stupid. I mean, come on, man, got to see a little something, something. I got to see a little something that's going to trigger you, a little spark that's going to make you get a little pissed, a little mad. Slam it back at the rock. Just some. Give me something. Because so far, in my opinion, The Rock is winning this war of the words. And, and I don't think it's close. Um, and, and and look, like I said, I get it. You know, I know that, it, you know, what the, the, the parts they're playing and the scripts they're handed and, and stuff like that that's, that's done all ahead of time backstage. Most of the time, you know, they're not just doing this, you know, going out there and just doing what they want to do. But if it is being written and stuff like that, I think it's just being written a little too passive. And I want to see, you know, we're getting close. We got like four shows left. And Cody's probably going to be on maybe one or two of them if he's going to stick on Raw. And you know he's going to have at least one more confrontation of The Rock, Jeff. I want to see, I want to see him mad. I want to see him angry just once. You know, he doesn't have to go insane angry or anything like that, but I want to see him get pissed. I think I need that. And I'm not sure if the other fans do as well, but I know I do. Let, let me ask you this, Joe. Let's say we don't get it between now and WrestleMania night one. But let me let me throw something at you, though. Yep. Let's say that Cody cost himself that tag match on night one. And he and Rock goes towards his mother and he snaps right then. And that's what cost him the match. But the next night he's in the, you know, bloodline rules match, no rules. Maybe that's what he wants. Maybe that's what he needs to go, you know, and finish that story. Um, I, I think though, you know, just, I think us expecting anyone to even come close to matching wits with the rock on the microphone. Like it's just, he's like one of the greatest. Um, and, and if you told me that he was the greatest, I don't think I could argue with you. I've got other people that, I mean, he's in my top five. I mean, I, I don't, I think you have to have the rock in oh, your top yeah, five. No uh, but I think, you know, I think Cody, I think this is a, <laughs> this is an opportunity that we'll see Cody hit that level. I don't know if we see it on a show or if we see it all play out at WrestleMania because that's another thing too is that maybe he cost himself that tag match and he puts himself in this horrible situation that we're all thinking and everybody's like man you know how could Cody 
let this moment get to him like that. He's got to know better. You know, now he's going to be facing all these odds and blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, if he overcomes them, then, um, you know, but I just think that I think we'll get it. I just don't think it's going to happen before we get to WrestleMania. But I, I agree that, you know, I do want to see a little bit more anger and it's cool to call him an a-hole and all that stuff, but it's like Conrad mentioned earlier. I kind of wish that WWE didn't script promos. I wish that they would, and I don't know what the setup is now. I don't know how creative is doing things now, but um, I want to see a little bit more of that that uh, that AEW um, Cody Rhodes on the microphone and you know, kind of cutting loose and saying some things because I, I want to see what he comes up with. I think Cody's a guy that, I mean, as incredibly over as he is and as beloved as he is by the fans at this point, he's another guy that I think doesn't get a lot of credit when it comes to his overall skills. And I think on the microphone, he he's strong, but I, I just feel like sometimes because he's a baby face, you know, you get into that typical baby face kind of nice guy persona and you basically gotta you know run the guy over to get him to get any kind of anger going uh i i want to see i want to see that flip but i don't know if it'll happen before i just think that you know i think it might play out at wrestlemania we might see a little bit of an edge come out for uh for for cody at wrestlemania you could be right. You know, he, you know, honestly, he's reminded me a little bit of, with these promos lately, Jeff. Bob Backlund. <laughs> he really is. Bob Backlund used to come out and deliver a promo. Now, 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 not exactly. If you know Bob Backlund, Bob Backlund was kind of a little quiet, a little shy on the mic, and kind of always put his head down a little bit in respect and stuff like that. Um, but he's kind of reminded me a little bit of Bob Backlund. He's he's. He's doing some of the little stuff that seems to be to these other wrestlers like a little more like childish in a way, like a little bit more like reserved and kind of very laid back. Bob Backlund was never used to, you never saw that dude get excited. Now I'm not saying Cody's like that at all, um, but it's kind of some of the some of the stuff this reminded me of it a little bit. Um, you're you're more than likely right. You're more than likely right. Um, it, it may end up happening somewhere soon uh, where you you'll see him, and maybe maybe it does take wrestling. Maybe the Rock wanders over to his mom in that front row and that's when that's when he snaps and maybe like you said maybe that costs him that match and uh, maybe that little snapping costs him because that that teaches you a life lesson in a way and um, when you're the good guy and you snap it doesn't usually turn out well uh, so that kind of maybe would bring up almost like a life lesson now you did this you know and then he's all upset because he did this to himself uh, he realizes that they got in his head. They played the mind games with him. Uh, and then he goes over and he costs himself that tag match. And now he, now he's got even more barriers that he has to go through because of that. So, uh, Mr. Backlund wants you all, wants you to list all the presidents. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't ever seen a Backlund, uh, promo, go, go and watch it, man. Like it just the quietest promos that you ever, he was like this unassuming dude and just would have his head down talking like this almost the entire time when he's talking. And, and, and it's, <laughs> it's just, um, you know, so co completely different personality, but just reminded me a little bit of that and brought a little bit of that back, but um, good stuff. I love it. Uh, that's my grievance for the week. Uh, not a very big one. Some of you are going to say it's a little bit nitpicky and that's fine. Um, but it's just me, you know, it's just a personal thing that I just kind of want to see more of. Um, and, uh, and we'll see, we got four more weeks to go. So, uh, so we'll see what happens. Uh, yep. but there you go. That is our grievance for the week. I hope you enjoyed all that. Uh, Jeff, did you have one you wanted to share? I wasn't sure. I know you didn't really list one, but if you, the floor is yours, my friend. Real quick. Um, don't be a jerk. That's my grievance. <laughs> Uh, this is quite simple don't be a jerk um to people um don't be a jerk about wrestling because at the end of the day it's it's entertainment folks it's fun we don't have to hate other people for liking something that you might not like it's all good i promise you like i don't hate people that don't like brussels sprouts i love brussels sprouts <laughs> 
I don't expect everybody to like Brussels sprouts. I love them. I'm not gonna hate somebody because of that though. Um, so yeah, that that's all I had to say. Nothing that we don't already say. It's not really a grievance. It's just a. It's, I think at this point, it's just an understanding. Don't be a dick. Like like has been said on our show. So yeah, yeah. Alicia made that T-shirt logo. Um, I'll tell you who I hate. Uh, the person who apparently either decided to take my DoorDash tonight, uh, and when my DoorDasher got there, he was calling me and, and letting me know that my order wasn't there. And then I had to call the restaurant, and they said that the order had gone out. So someone stole my DoorDash. Uh, and they took my order, and I got no stuff. I was looking forward to the damn creamsicle frosty uh, oh, from from Wendy's. I I was all set to go. I got the biggie bag. Nope, none of that for me because some moron took my uh, took my order. Uh, and then on top of it all, the person who was my dasher uh, was calling me, and he was speaking Spanish. So I don't speak Spanish, uh, and I. <laughs> nothing I, oh man was i mad i called up doordash i called up wendy's i'm like this is ridiculous man i'm i i caught a promo man i cut a promo on wendy's tonight you cut a promo on wendy's and doordash <laughs> i did <laughs> now, here, the- here's the here's the test joe was it a rock style promo or was it a cody promo it was definitely a rock style promo. Okay. I was not happy, man. I I was on with that poor girl, and I'm like, this is absolutely ridiculous. I have never had this happen to me, and I'm going off, and she's trying. I, she was just, God bless, she was just listening. She wasn't trying to interrupt me or anything because I would have gone off even more. Uh, but, yeah, God, God bless, uh, you know, the, the, obviously the, the stuff's going to be refunded and all that kind of stuff, but I have never had that happen. I was so mad. <laughs> I you know turned what, heel. Joe, Joe, you know what? You just gave me a brilliant idea for another segment to add to our show. Oh, boy. Instead, it, taking the grievance a little further oh. and uh, and cutting a promo on something or someone for the week, I think, I, let, let, me, let me think through it, but I, I would love to hear a promo cut on Wendy's. Um, oh we, we're going to... We're going to have to <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. That's going to be a thing at some point. Oh, folks. my God. <laughs> Can you imagine if we could do promos on stuff we get pissed about? That'd be amazing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would be amazing. Let's go. Uh... <laughs> oh, I was so mad. Uh, but, yeah, there you go. Yes, they do have those bonus, baby. They, they sound absolutely amazing. Um, I'm, I'm, I love orange. I love creamsicles. Yeah. They basically just take that vanilla one and they put uh, syrup in them. That's how they've been doing the last, the pumpkin one. They did the same thing. Um, the strawberry one, they did the same thing. They just take the vanilla off the, off the thing and they put like the, the, the syrup and stuff in it. But, all right, cool. Good deal. Uh, we're moving on to our next segment, Jeff. I think we're going to go with it. Some, uh, sell or no sell. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's, let's go. Do it. You guys know what this is, sell or no sell. You're going to play along with us uh, more so than ever. If you haven't been here for a little while, this is now audience participation. Uh, so we're going to go through the first two, and then the third one is going to be voted on by you. Uh, we've got a little wheel. We do a little spin, and a little spin a uh, we're going to do, and uh, you're going to vote as to what the, the uh, third topic is going to be. So start thinking about that now because we want to we want you to, to throw those in the chat at the at the point when we get to the number three. So all right Jeff we got number one yeah yeah number one Gunther is the greatest intercontinental champ of all time sell or no sell wow dude there have been some amazing <laughs> and that one comes, champions that one comes from james chadwick so this is uh man oh man i could think of just uh don morocco uh who held that title for such a long time uh there have been some amazing icy champions over the years amazing icy champions over the years i love what gunther's done to bring that title back into prominence and so I love that uh, because he is – look, Jeff, th- this guy gets – listen, he's a he's a heel, but people love him. People are cheering him to win, which is crazy and because he's so good. He is so good in the ring. 
Um, this guy came from NXT. We all knew what a force he was there. He is absolutely fantastic as what at what he's doing. Uh, I'll be honest. I I love Sami Zayn, but I don't think Sami Zayn should beat him. I don't. I don't think Sami Zayn should beat him. I know a lot of people are, are thinking the whole, you know, Sami uh, deserves a title and all that kind of stuff. I, I get that. But I don't think he should beat him. Um, that said, though, a little too much history for me. A little too much history for me uh, in the past. And the, and the people, we, you got to remember, and again, you know, you guys who have just been watching wrestling maybe for the last 10 years, 15 years or so in and around there, you probably wouldn't remember the Intercontinental IC title being as prominent because it kind of went away. They, they weren't really doing nothing uh, for that very much. And then all of a sudden they brought it back into prominence. So you're not going to really remember a lot that came before, um, but the, the names that are out there. Uh, you know, Michaels, Razor Ramon, uh, the, the list goes on and on and on. Like I said, Don Morocco, who I hated, by the way, uh, but was Randy so good. Savage. Macho Man Randy Savage. I mean, big, big names that held this title and held it for a good long time. I'm going to no sell it, Jeff. I, I, just to me, he's great. He brought it back into play. I love where it's at, but I got to no sell it. There's just, there's just too much history with this title. Uh, and some people that have, have held it for a, a good long time too. I so I'm I'm gonna hit your no sale. This is a, this is a tough one for me um, because I feel like, given what he's done and restoring the title to a to a place where it used to be, I think deserves some praise in and of itself. Uh, because he has elevated the title once again. I mean, before, it, for anyone that that is new to wrestling, the IC title was really the the workers title and the next person up. Like you would you would get the IC title, and then you know after that run, you'd end up in the main event scene. And I feel like he's gotten it back to that point, and I think that deserves a lot of kudos and a lot of praise. But in a category where you've got, I mean, Macho Man, you've got Ricky Steamboat, you've got Chris Jericho, um, The Miz. Hey, Jobson just uh, mentioned Honky Tonk Man. Honky Tonk Man, who he beat his record. I mean, I just think there's something to say. Um, I, there's something to say about the people that came before. So, as much as I love Gunther, and he's probably in my top five, which is saying a lot, uh, given that, you know, it's not like he's had a lot of longevity with it in terms of many years and multiple reigns. But, um, man, I, it's hard for me to sell it. It's, it's hard for me to, to say he's the greatest. But I, I'm not, I'm not going to, yeah, Razor Ramon. Don't, yeah, I'm not going to forget him. Um, I, I just can't put him at the top of that list just yet. So I'm going to no sell it too. Yeah. Yep. Let's see what people are saying out here. I agree. Uh, it's just too big of a list that, that, that people have been on there. Uh, and just too much. Uh, let's see. Sorry. I'm late. Says John G. No worries, dude. Um, a lot of people selling it. Gus, John G. Uh, Barry Monkey says no sell. So many different IC champs. Hard to compare. Um, let me see if there's any above you. Um, sell says DRO. Andrew says sell. Um, for his wrestling skills, I would say sell. JB says sell. Hello, JB, by the way. Um, Conrad saying sell. Uh, we've got Jerry Brown saying sell. Um, and we got Dylan with a no sell. We've got uh, for longevity says a uh, Lex Bliss Gamer says sell. Uh, then we got a Scott Hall mention. Um, yeah, even the Miz did well. Yeah, yeah. I just think uh, there's so much history behind it, and uh, and like I said, I know uh, that that uh, you know people immediately right now are going to remember Gunther for what he does, and and you know, listen, certainly should. Um, but there was a time when that title had been just gone, and then there there was nothing going on with it. It was let go. And it's it's a very historic title, and it deserved better. Uh, so he's he's great. Uh, sell and no sell means selling means you like it. No selling means you don't like it. Very easy. 
Very easy. All right, moving on. What's next? All right, up next, we've got this AEW um, sell or no sell. Uh, 2024 will be the year that the AEW women's division competes with other promotions to have a claim at the best women's division in wrestling. Sell or no sell. Ooh, this one's spicy. Um, I look, they're improving. They've got a lot of great women there. They've got Deanna Perrazzo now, like I said. They've got Tony Storm. They've got Thunder Rosa back. Dr. Britt Baker's coming back. Now you have Mercedes Monet, one of the best women's wrestlers that there is. Uh, I'll sell it. I think it's a. I think it's a pretty easy sell. I think they're. I don't like it. I love it, love it, love it. Um, yeah, I, I, I think it's an easy sell. Uh, I do. Um, I was, I was, you know, at least on our show anyway. I was probably one of the biggest critics of them in their women's division over the past couple of years. Uh, I think they are, are, they are really coming back with uh, a lot of uh, very good athletes, and that's not including the people that they have uh, on Ring of Honor. Uh, as well so uh yeah i i think that they are going to they're going to move in that direction i think it's going to be better listen mercedes very uh, you know influential person right and even if you know there might be somebody that might be not a hundred percent convinced uh that the women should have as much of time as the men do and you know maybe there's there's somebody that is not 100 percent behind that she's very influential and I think just having her there might just sway that a little bit more. Uh, so, I, yeah, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be positive. I'm gonna be positive with it, and I'm gonna I'm gonna sell it. And I think that yeah, I think that they're gonna climb up the now. Am I gonna say that you know they're better than WWE? Am I gonna say that they're better than TNA? Um, no. But I, I think they're gonna. You know, the question is, do they compete with other promotions to have a claim? That I agree with. Yes, I, I definitely agree with that, Jeff. Yeah, I do too. I'm I'm gonna sell it because I think, you know, it's not saying are they gonna be better. It's compete, and I would argue with you that the talent on the roster has uh, a chance to be as good, if not better, than other companies. I'm just gonna throw that out there. Uh, but I think that this is this is the time that they will get the opportunities. They'll get the spotlight. Um, here, here's what I want to explain that gives me the reason why I'm selling this. You don't sign Mercedes Monet to the, to the rumored contract that she signed to if you aren't going to put some, some effort behind booking that division. I, I just... I don't think you sign her to that contract if you don't have some type of game plan in place to say, okay, we've heard the criticism. Now <laughs> let's, let's rock with it. Let's do what we got to do. A hundred percent agree, Conrad. And let me ask you this, Conrad, are the first two in order? Because I've heard some people making arguments, which I can't really, I can't, disagree with but if you think about where wwe's women's division is right now i've heard some people make arguments is it better than the knockouts division i can't i can't argue against that i i definitely can't argue against that um as much as we love the knockouts i just gotta be honest there are so many storylines in wwe's women's division that I mean, and I'm not just talking about main event. I'm talking about throughout the division, and that's that's a rarity. So, but I got to give AEW their kudos. I do. Um, I think they are heading in the right direction. I think they're on on the right track. And um, you know, we like you said, we've been critical. We've asked for more, and I think we're about to get more. So I, I'm I'm there. Give it a few months, I think, for for uh, for TNA, and and come back and ask me again, because yeah. I think uh, we gotta remember they lost a big piece in in Deanna. Deanna was a big piece of that division, um, and and just losing one person doesn't necessarily make it so that they that they fall off, and they're still right there. But I do think what you know to Jeff's point, 
uh, Jane Cargill, Tiffany Stratton. Uh, these are pe- these are these are women that really haven't even gotten their stride yet on the main roster. Uh, that goes already with the people you already had there: Rhea Ripley, Bailey. Uh, you know, the list goes on and on. And then the people that are in NXT as well. Uh, so I do, but I do think I do think. And I don't know whether it's going to be what pay per view it's going to be at. And I said this to Jeff the other night during our stream. They're going to have a big woman signing. Ash by Elegance is great. I like her. Uh, I think she's doing a good job there. But I think they need that one. I think they need that one big one. And I think it's coming in the way of Camille. That's my prediction. Uh, if they get her, we all know what she did when she was in NWA. Broke an ages old record. People don't give that woman her kudos. That was a huge record that she broke. <laughs> Holding that uh, historic. There's another historic title. Um, so I, th- I think that they may end up signing her at some point. She shows up and that is going to be big for them. And uh, not saying that she replaces a Deanna Perrazzo, but, but that's a, that's a big signing for them. So I think more to come. Uh, in uh, in TNA as as we go. So, uh, but yeah, great question. Love it. All right, guys, you know what time it is. This is the time now when we spin the wheel. You guys all have to start giving us some questions. So so let's start. There's the wheel. Jeff's got it right in front of him there. Uh, reminds me of Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> Except there's spin the wheel, wheel. the deal. Spin there the wheel. You go. There you go. So let us know uh, what you've got. Uh, shout them out in the chat. Uh, and we'll we'll uh, we'll vote on them, and uh, maybe when you get all right. Let's see. Uh, AEW needs to keep pushing the women's division on the right path, uh, says DRO. I think that was just an answer to the last question. Yeah, that, correct? yeah, that was yeah. the answer to the last. Okay, question. all right. Uh, Camille, a three one-time champ, baby, a three year. Yes, yeah. Uh, Conrad saying, did WWE hold off too long on Jade Cargill? Okay. Sell or no sell? On I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to say, yeah, I'm going to say WWE held. Debut. Too long. All right. Damien says, uh, Roma's current reign has been. Okay. I must have missed that one. That must have been up higher. Brand, I'm sorry, Brandon. Oh, Brandon. Let's see. I must have missed that. T- oh, um, oh, okay. Roman's t- current title reign has been more. Uh, uh, omin- sir, uh, more ominous. Did you mean ominous? More ominous since the end? Or the more sir nominous sir nominous than the undertaker's wrestling streak um tna will get a major tv deal in 2025 says james shadrick andy johnson we have females on our show buddy (laughs) jody is jody's on our channel and she's got her own show uh and brandy comes from time to time whenever she can make it so uh we have we have females with us bud (laughs) Who's what? What was that? Andy Johnson wrote. Should Joe and Jeff had a female audition to the uh, audition to the show? <laughs> uh, yeah. Wait. Okay. <laughs> you uh, might want to tune in to, to uh, Abby's. <laughs> there, there's a show called uh, Abby's Abode. Yes. Um, <laughs> and if you and if you want to take a look at classic wrestling, uh, there's a a playlist for the Hot Tag with Brandy that's on there too. If you want to see. Yes, oh, and we've had a lot of uh guest appearances from friends like uh marie shadows and, yep. and many others so yeah yep, yep absolutely absolutely all right uh ceremonious uh thank you deanna uh why is Britt baker not on the show said jerry uh she was been injured um dan has seller no sell lex luger going into the hall of fame next year in minnesota is a layup mm. so we'll take that first one um, I think just her time. Uh, there are women in the chat that are wiser than some of the men. Yes, that is very true, Deanna. Absolutely very true. Very true. Is that all we got so far? Anybody else? How many we got, Jeff? Let's see. I need one, two, three, four more. Come on, come on, come on. You guys got four. Here we go. Barry Monkey. Should TNA introduce a hardcore title? Need three more. Three more. Come on, guys. We got 126 people out there. Let's go. (laughs) 
Come on, man. Uh, come on. We got to get three more. Three more seller no sells. Cody, I'm going to, so I'm going to make a play off of John G's and say Cody does not finish his story. Oh, okay. All right. All right. James Tabak's going the video game route. WWE 2K24 is the best 2K video game they have produced. Need one more. Should TNA book Top Dollar as a future champion? There you go. All right. We'll save Conrad's for next week. Yeah, I'm going to use that one, Conrad, as a as a regular one. So nice. I'm gonna there, you go. That one. there you go. Carry over. Very good. Thank you, folks. All right, we're going to give that wheel a spin as soon as Jeff gets done placing them all in there. And then we will do the people's choice. Seller no sell question. All right. And Jerry, I don't just pick one. I spin the wheel. So I'll leave it up to chance. Yep. Sir. But I do take some of these down and use them for future episodes. So if yours doesn't get chosen, it doesn't mean that it won't be used at a later date. There you go. All right, so here we go. Folks are seeing the wheel. There it is. All right. James Chadwick's TNA to get a major TV deal in 2025. They will get a TV deal in 2025. Sell or no sell. Major TV mm. deal. Wow. Okay. Um. You know, I can, I can, I can see that happening. The only, uh, the only thing that stands in the way of that is Anthem themselves, because they, they have, you know, they own access and all that kind of stuff. So, the, the whole question there is, are they going to want to ever do that? Because that would initially, you know, that would say to me that I don't know, maybe they can make some kind of cross. To, ah, hell, I'm just, gonna, you know what, I'm just, gonna, I'll sell it. I'll sell it. I'm going to sell it because it makes a lot of sense. Uh, from a lot of standpoints, they said they're trying to better the company when the whole thing with Scott happened, and uh, that would certainly make it better, um, you know, and get get it off of YouTube maybe, and and get it out there on on a on a channel that everybody could watch, uh, at, you know, and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm gonna say sell it. I think it's a logical step. Um, they're they're making the small strides this year with the arenas and stuff like that that they're they're going into a little bit bigger, taking the small steps. Um, but maybe I could see that, you know, look, we had, we had a couple TV deals that fell through, um, with, with some of the other companies that did. I remember the NWA deal guys that uh, was supposed to take place that fell through. So maybe some of these other networks, you know, they might want to get their toe in the water a little bit. So, uh, you know, maybe they, maybe they negotiate, uh, with, uh, we don't know what goes on behind these big, uh, you know, glass sky rises somewhere up in some major city and boardrooms and all that kind of stuff. So who knows? Uh, but, uh, but I, listen, I would think it's good, uh, whether it'll happen or not. Yeah. Why not? Why not? I think it could be the next logical step. And I think they're, they're going to keep that. Listen, they did say when Scott got, uh, let go that they were looking to continue to improve the product. I don't really have a reason to not believe that. So yeah, why not? I, I'm going to, I'm going to sell it. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna no sell it. Okay. And I think the reason why is because Anthem owns TNA and in order for TNA to get a deal, it means that Anthem would not have to be the owners anymore. Um, but I will say this. I do think that at some point in 2024, TNA may be sold from Anthem, which I think could lead to them possibly getting a deal it all depends on who buys them but I, for now i'm gonna no sell it just because of the the relationship with anthem but i do think it's a possibility that tna gets sold i wish they would have sold it to uh scott demore maybe scott demore comes back to the table with some uh some partners and investors who knows but um i i think that's a possibility all right fair enough all right there you go Thank you so much for participating. We appreciate it. Um, and uh, we're going to continue to do that every single week on the show. So there you go. Uh, that would be huge, Jeff, depending on the buyer. I hope Anthem knows what they're doing after firing Scott Demore. Anthem would want the income instead of sharing it, sadly. Uh, I should sing for a game show theme. That's a very crazy commentary, but okay. <laughs> 
All right, man. We're uh, we're moving on, Jeff. What do we got next? Burning question of the week, and this Ooh. one. Um, this, let, let's let's heat it up a little bit. We're feeling the fire a little bit. So, um, this question. So I alluded to it earlier, and I kind of don't think this person is uh is overreacting now that I'm thinking about it. But the question is, the bloodline slash Cody stuff is great, but I fear WWE won't progress the story well. I feel like they'll try to pull too many twists at WrestleMania. Am I overreacting? Wow. Okay. I, I could see why you're maybe thinking that you can't look, I guess this is all a question and they seem to be quoting a lot of music tonight, but uh, this is, this is a question and I'll refer this one to a Billy Joel song. And uh, this is a matter of trust. This is a matter of trust. Do you, or do you not trust the new regime of WWE? Now that uh, you know who is out the door um, and uh, things have changed, you know, and a lot of people saying things have changed for the better. I'm hearing that from a lot of higher up critics and stuff like that of the WWE that oh, really oh, didn't oh, like the. Hold on, Joe. Hold on, Joe. Hold yeah, on. Go ahead. Joe. Go ahead. Um, hold on. Hold on. Because I'm trying to. I just heard something, but I, I don't know when you when you mentioned that. Um, I heard something in the background. I can't seem to. Maybe it's not going to play now, but, um, yeah, apparently the toilet broke when you mentioned uh, that someone before. It won't oh, flush. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, so I, I'm sorry about that, folks. Yeah, that's uh, that's, that's uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, that, um, that's, like a, that's like a three or four flusher. Um, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that well, would have been, yeah, that would have been a multiple thing there, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and so I can listen, I can understand why people don't yet completely trust um, because so many times and look, they're playing on that. This whole thing with the rock, they're playing on that because in the past with the past regime, this is the kind of thing that would happen. And don't think for a minute, they don't know that. And, you know, the whole veteran coming in and taking the place of somebody else that deserves it and gets a shot at the title instead of a person who deserves it, that's been going on for years. And they're playing on that. So, yeah, I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I mean, fear we won't progress the story. Well, I feel like I'm trying to read it again. I feel like they'll try to pull too many twists at WrestleMania. <sighs> I guess the def you have to look at this from the person who asked it. What is your definition of twists? Are you talking about like, you know, where you're going to maybe not think he's going to win and then he does? Because I hate to tell you, but that's definitely going to happen. <laughs> I already said that. Yeah, that that part is going to happen. They're going to make you think that he's going to, is, is no chance. No doubt. No doubt. They're going to, they're going, and I'm, I'll tell you this right now. If he does, if they don't lose that tag team match, I will be shocked if The Rock and Roman don't win that. Shocked. Um, because of what Jeff talked about earlier. They want you to disbelieve. They don't want everybody thinking that he's a lock to win on night two or it ruins everything. They want everybody to be, to have that big moment at the end where they're all just that overly amount of flooded joy takes over for all the fear and all the nervousness that you had locked down inside of you for an hour or hour long the match is going to be they want that to, to you know be overcome at the end and have the biggest explosion of relief that the crowd could have along with the, the applause and everything else that's what they want to do so if you're saying that the, if that's what you're describing as a twist that's going to happen there, there, there's no doubt. That's just wrestling, and that's 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 good wrestling when that stuff happens. It's it's when it's when a twist doesn't make sense that it's not good wrestling. So, 
Are they going to try to pull too many twists? Now, maybe go back to the beginning of the show when we were talking about yeah. this earlier, and I talked about having Triple H come down, how, how it was mentioned by the – if Triple H would come down with a bat, get involved, and deck Cody with a baseball bat, that's my definition of too much. That's my definition of too much twist. So are they going to do that? Um, I, if that's your definition of twist, then yes, I think you are overreacting. If 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 you're just saying that they're going to pull a bunch of twists and turns, uh, maybe your definition is that Seth turns on Cody. That's another big one that people seem to be thinking is going to happen. I don't think so. I don't think so. Maybe somewhere. Listen, guys, Seth may lose that title. And if he does, don't think for one second we're not going to get Seth Rollins versus Cody Rhodes because that's going to happen. Oh, it's hap going to happen. That's going to happen. So there's going to be a fissure somewhere along the lines that that's going to happen. Um, but I don't, it's not going to happen here. Um, so it depends on what your that, definition that was a good is. SAT word. That was a good SAT word, Joe Fisher. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I go back to my, uh, my English lit every now and then, uh, but, just, <laughs> uh, but yes. So, uh, you know, give me your definition uh, of, of what that twist means, but that's, that's how I look at it from my standpoint, Jeff, what do you think? So I think what they're talking about is let's say let's say that that Seth and Cody lose, but then also um let's say that Jay goes back to the bloodline or you know, like it gets to a level where and I hate to even bring this up, but like the super Cena days where it's like you stack every single odd against Cody and somehow, some way he overcomes every single one. And I think that might be the fear, like seeing too many people turn or seeing double and quadruple turns and, you know, different things. I think that's what they're talking about. And in that case, I just, the only thing I want to say about this is as long as it makes sense, I think that's, it's going to be good. And to James Chadwick's point, don't don't think for one second. I think Tomatonga does show up, uh, Conrad. I do think he shows up at WrestleMania. But I will say this: I don't let it be lost on you that Triple H is fully aware that he's got to knock this WrestleMania out of the park. Like it's got to be, it's got to be brilliantly executed. To to Conrad's point. If they can pull it off, make it make sense, and not just convolute the situation more, then I I think we're fine. But if it starts to go into well, this person gets involved and that person gets involved, and I, I think you might be going down a dangerous path. And Conrad brought up no uh, Vince Russo level swerves. I agree with that statement. <laughs> we don't need those types of swerves. We don't need we don't need a soap opera. It's already been you know, a, a great story, kind of a, you know, kind of a movie playing out in front of us. We don't need as the world turns to play out at, um, at WrestleMania and do not judge me for knowing what the soap operas are. I grew up <laughs> in my grandmother's house. We watch them every day. Yes. I know who Victor Newman is. So don't judge me. Don't come at me. <laughs> <laughs> a Vince Russo level swerve would be, uh, the aforementioned uh, Corbin coming down with a can of dog food and hitting Roman Reigns yeah. with the dog food and yeah. knocking him out so that uh, so yeah. Cody could win. Yeah, I I, I agree. It's I don't but don't for a second think that you're not going to get a bunch of that. You are you're you're going to get. They're going to make it look as if Jay Uso is going to turn. I can guarantee you, you're going to you're going to you're going to get all that. I can tell you right now, you're going to get all that. He's going to give him a side eye at some point and make you doubt for a minute that he's just going to, he may even come over and make it look like he's going to hit Cody or give him a super kick and he might turn around and, and hit his brother or hit somebody else. Um, don't for a second think you're not getting that because you are. So just, you know, if, you, if you're a nail biter, man, you better, uh, you better, you better have those nails ready to go. Uh, you, you know, maybe, maybe take a little shot of whiskey or something, something before the show starts because you, you're probably going to need it. You're gonna, your nerves are gonna be shot uh, by the end of that uh, match. I can tell you right now, Days of Our Lives. Yeah, I think, I think I, I still remember the theme of that. My mom watched all those Days of Our Lives, General Hospital with Luke and Laura uh, in the '80s when they were huge. Um, you know, hell, I even watched some of the nighttime ones. Dallas, uh, um, what, what not landing, 
Knott's Landing, Falcon Crest. Uh, uh, I mean, hell, you could even say really that Saturday Night TV with Love Boat and Fantasy Island were kind of pseudo soap operas. Yeah. Um, same thing. And I mean, I watch those all the time. So, hey, whatever. <laughs> it's, it is what it is. <laughs> uh yeah man uh so stories my mom called them stories, stories yep the stories the my stories. mom my mom would come in from work hey what happened on the stories today so i had <laughs> i had to watch so i could tell my mom you know yep. so you yep. know i yep. like i said i admitted in the in the chat that for a while on bold and the beautiful i knew exactly what ridge and brooke were doing and they're in their you know love <laughs> saga and all that stuff so um yeah so i i was I was one of those kids that during the summer I was with my grandparents every single day and we watched <laughs> we watched we watched all of the stories. We watched in the heat of the night. We watched two two seven. We watched uh the Jeffersons, all of that stuff. So yeah. That was a big part of our childhood, man. I couldn't bother my mom. When I'd come home from school, she'd be like, go, go upstairs and do your homework. I'm watching my stories. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's it. Yeah. That was a big thing. <laughs> it was a big thing. Uh, but in any case, uh, there you go. Yeah. So uh, great burning question. Loved it. And uh, yeah, good, good stuff. Good stuff. All right. We're moving on. What do we got next? Favorite moments of the week. Ooh, this is always fun. Uh, all right, guys, we're going to go three. We're going to go two. We're going to go one. We're going to do them. Uh, ours, we're going to give you our favorite moments of the week. Please play along in the chat. And you guys start at number three. We're going to go into number three right now. Then we'll go three. Then we'll go two. And then we'll go one. What were your favorite moments in wrestling this past week? So, Jeff, start us off. What's your number three? My number three moment of the week. Um, I typically don't do this, but I feel like, you know, because of the super chat that we got earlier, I, I got to shout out the match between Jordan Grace and Tasha Steeles. Mm -hmm. Um, really good match. I thought, and just goes to show where Tasha Steeles belongs on the card. I feel like she needs to be in that main event area. Um, so, um, so yeah, I, that was one of my favorite matches that I watched this week. I like it. I like it. I like it. Very good. I am going, my number three is going to be, um, and I, again, I've, I've said this before. I don't get to watch this show all that often, but I, I saw some fun stuff going on between two veterans of the ring, uh, in an AEW I quit match. That was probably, and I've seen a lot of those over the years. They can get a little gimmicky sometimes. Um, uh, but seeing Christian cage, uh, going up against, uh, I still call him Edge, Adam Copeland uh, in that match. And and some of the stuff they did in that was just tremendous. They were in front of a hockey crowd, and they knew it. They threw on hockey jerseys and were beating each other up in a hockey fight at one point. Um, uh, Christian got thrown into a goal. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was a phenomenal match. Really, really was. Um, I can tell you this. Um, you know, I – we were talking about giving uh, AEW some kudos and um, I don't watch the show enough to really criticize much. Um, but you know, I've got to give them credit where it's due. Uh, that was a phenomenal match. Uh, like I said, the, the woman's match that I saw, uh, the one night that I tuned in and saw uh, Riho going up against Willow was fantastic. Um, they are, they're doing some really fun things and uh, their matches of the, the wrestling there has always been pretty good, has always been pretty good. Uh, the quality of wrestling. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I like it. Give them kudos. And it, it was literally, if you haven't seen it, check it out. It was literally probably one of the best uh, right up there with probably the best I quit matches I've ever seen. Uh, and two fantastic guys who uh, are going to be remembered for a, a long, long time. And, you know, I, I go back to thinking, you know, when, when some of these athletes leave, uh, WWE and they go elsewhere. Um, uh, people, you know, right away get down on them and be like, Oh, that's, you know, that's stupid for him to go. Look guys. Um, he's, he, uh, you know, Adam is flourishing there and look at the, you know, where he left, where, where would you have seen him fit in? Where would you have seen him fit in if he decided to stay in WWE? Nowhere. He, he, he would have probably had to maybe turn heel at some point, but where would he fit in right now? Um, so he went somewhere else where he is fitting in and good for him. 
um, and, and, you know, especially we you know his history with the back and stuff like that. So yeah, so that was that was my number three. I thought that was a really fantastic match. All right, let's see what we got in the chat. We have number threes. I'm looking for number threes. We have a number three Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns promo. Uh, <coughs> we have L.A. Knight and A.J. Styles <laughs> brawl. Uh, fantastic. Uh, by, uh, by the <laughs> way, I can I'll tell people now that um, I've I've known AJ Styles, have watched AJ Styles for a long, long, long time. I've never seen the man this jack before. This dude is like, I mean, he he's been pumping that iron, baby. He's been he's been pumping it. He he's been getting those buys and and everything built up because that dude is just jacked. He is. Hey, he he is just jacked at this point. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Uh, it's, it's just, yeah, you're right. He is. He, <laughs> he looks amazing. Uh, but yeah. Uh, number three, Jordan Grace versus Tasha Steele says, Dylan, return of the Slammies, says James Chadwick. My number three is Sammy Gable Gunther segment. That was really good how they played that. Uh, that was really good. I love the whole interaction with all three of them and Chad Gable interacting with Sammy and so and so. Yep. Bonus Baby says, the whole TNA Impact show last week, Tasha and Jordan Grace Knockouts World Championship match. Uh, number three, seeing Aiden Prince back in TNA uh, on Explosion. He's had terrible luck with injuries for years. It's very monkey. Um, AJ Styles House. Aaron says AEW Dynamite. Uh, number three, uh, remaining vigilant after Scott leaving. They have had roller coaster times lately, but stayed strong. Uh, I like it. Jordan Grace versus Tasha Steeles. Um, Christian got his nuggets mashed, and it was great. <laughs> AEW Dynamite was their number three, Aaron. Jade Cargill continuing, Nick, all this is being the dominant GM right now in WWE. Old Nick has been a Mariano Rivera level closer lately. Uh, your turn, Postman Pierce. Yeah, I like the back and forth that they're doing between those two. It's kind of cool to see. The announcement of Baszler versus Masha Slamovich for Bloodsport Mania. Yeah, that's a big yeah, that's, one. Right? That's, that's, that's a big, big one. Um, Anthony Blackwell Jr. Hey, fellas. Fellow wrestling content creator here myself. First time stopping in and showing that love. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, good luck, hey. dude. Yeah, and shout out your channel, uh, Anthony, yeah. so we can have folks go and sub uh, to your channel. But yeah, yeah. Thank, you for stop, thank you for stopping in. Uh, thank you for the support. And listen, that's what we try to do, too. We try, we try to show love and support to uh, other fellow creators out there. So drop your uh, channel in the chat and uh, let folks go and sub to your channel. Yeah, no doubt, man. Absolutely, no doubt. Uh, glad you stopped by, and uh, yeah, absolutely. Make sure and uh, show them some love, guys. Uh, uh, when uh, when you see the channel pop up there, the Nuggets. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, da, 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 shut your damn mouth! Are you dead ass serious? Masha versus Shayna. Uh, La Knight coming to AJ Styles' house. Uh, Masha Shane is going to be uh, interesting. LA Knight coming to AJ Styles' house. Nick versus Speedball also. Jack Perry requests his AEW release. Uh, AJ Styles getting pumped for his retirement run in TNA. <laughs> no top three. I think Jeff and Joe know how I have only one top moment this week, hence the Twitter. D oh, yeah, I know what Derek's top one is. Yep, I saw it. Did you see? Yeah, did, you, did he send it to you, Jeff? If it's what I think it is, then that's a top moment for a lot of people. Yep. All I'll say is it concerns a house show and it concerns Rhea Ripley. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, ROH getting focused for pay-per-view. I feel like they've been last. WrestleMania focus on the undercard. Uh, Edge versus Christian said Gus. All right, Jeff, what do you, what do you got as your number two? Number two, um, there's definitely a theme with my first two here. But number two for me, I got to give kudos to WWE for not being lazy and doing more than uh, one uh, storyline um, when it comes to their women's division. Mm -hmm. The fact that we may get, and I think this might happen. I, I don't, I don't want to, I'm not, you know, too good with my WWE predictions, but um, I think it's very possible. We might get Jade Cargill. Bianca Belair and Naomi versus damage control in a three on three. Mm. I, I think it's very possible we might get that. And if we do, my goodness, kudos. But I, I'm I'm looking forward to see what they do. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's I. Yeah, I'm 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 enjoying that um, that that whole storyline that's going on there. Yeah, I like it. Lives Raw incident is Aaron's number two. Um, everything is my name. Uh, everything is my name. Very easy to find. Yeah, that would be your name. Uh, easy to find. Yes. Uh <laughs> James Chadwick. <laughs> <laughs> my number two man is I like. The I like some of the setups that uh, TNA is doing uh, with some of their characters. I like the obviously we're going back to and God only knows what kind of mess we're going to get. But we're going back to Big Con and PCO. That is not over by a long shot. I didn't think it would be. We're going to get something out of that. Uh, that's going to be big and hopefully bloody, according to James. Uh, but, you know, and I also like. Uh, what they're doing with Crazy Steve as well, how he kind of fit into that mix a little bit. Uh, so a lot of the storylines that are going on with them right now, I kind of dig, uh, except for my boy Joe Hendry getting pummeled. Uh, not too Ooh. not too thrilled about that, but we'll see how he makes his comeback on that one, uh, of course, in AJ Francis. And I do like the, the – we're going to hear uh, from Rich Swan. I'm really looking forward to that. Want to hear from Rich Swan as to what made him turn – why did he decide to uh, side with AJ Francis uh, on, on TNA? So I'm liking the storylines. Uh, also love the factioning there. Uh, obviously the system, uh, fantastic. I really love what the way they're doing it with that. Very powerful right now. They've got all the gold, and who knows? Maybe Alicia will get herself some gold at some point too. So I just that's my number two. I, I like the I like what TNA is doing. Um, they've got to have to you know big build up toward another pay per view that's going to be coming up shortly. Uh, so I like the storylines I'm seeing on a weekly basis uh, from TNA, and a lot of it's not even back. You know, it, a lot of it's not even the backstage stuff as much anymore. A lot of it's just telling stories in the ring. Uh, so that, that's my number two. I'm digging that uh let's see uh, uh cody unfiltered roasting the rock on raw dan Housen beating matt cardona last night at gcw role model nice uh cody and roman confrontation um Rhea was very cheeky yes <laughs> did you see what uh buddy matthew said joe no where is it he said that's a weekly occurrence for him this is, oh man <laughs> <laughs> kudos man hey, hey hey don't hate the player a, that, hate that, that's a tip of the cap right there uh, don't hate the player hate know, the game that's a <laughs> yep <laughs> oh that's great uh number two styles and nice brawl um Cody's promo on Raw says Alexa Bliss Gamer. Uh, Cody slapping the rocks says DRO. Uh, gotta love Buddy. That's his mommy. It is. Uh, <laughs> Copeland Christian's I Quit match. The trust of Christian to let Copeland swing a nail covered board at his pillbox. That's uh, his bonus baby. Uh, Rich Homie Swan. Yeah, man. Love it. Uh, he's a lucky. <laughs> he is. Uh, all right we're down to our number ones or up to our number ones however you want to look at it so what was your guys number one moment of the week let us know in the chat we're going to give you ours jeff what was your number one well it's hard for me to go anywhere else this week for my number one um so i gotta just be true to it um wwe releasing the uh information that we'll be getting a documentary on bray wyatt on peacock April 1st, um, that was my number one moment for several reasons. Obviously, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I saw the trailer for it. I teared up. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be an emotional, emotional watch. No but problem. I am so happy that they did this. Um, it, it, I think it's going to truly be special. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. So that's my number one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a great number one, and I'm probably going to go there too. When I saw it happen, I'm gonna I'm gonna put up there the backyard brawl too because we don't see that very much in wrestling anymore. So the AJ uh, Styles and LA Knight thing, I like that. That's going to lead up to something funky at WrestleMania. So I, I kind of dig that. But yeah, look when 
you know, we haven't heard anything um, in, in a bit, obviously, about Bray, and rightly so. Um, and then, you know, you kind of started to see some things. I know JoJo was out at an autograph signing recently um, up in Jeff's neck of the woods. Um, and then people, you know, obviously he's in the game. Um, and, and now I would imagine you, you might start to see after this documentary comes out, there might be, uh, listen, that that the cover of that documentary would make a, a brilliant T-shirt. And I'm sure you you might see something like that. That proceeds may go to the family uh, for all of that. Um, they did say that uh, some of the, the figure companies that make the action figures were waiting that they're they're still going to produce brave figures, but they were just wanted to give the family time and 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 everything to, for them to uh, to clear that. But um, yeah, this is going to be like Jeff said, it's going to be uh, a hard watch, um, and. You know, uh, for all of us that are big fans of his and uh, and to see, um, you know, sometimes seeing what might have been um, is, is very difficult to do. Um, so but yeah, uh, I, I think it's tremendous that they're doing it. I don't know how long this is going to be. I'm kind of hoping it's long. Um, I, yeah. I, you know, I know some of these documentaries could be a couple hours. I'm hoping that's what they give it. That's um, great. Yeah, I hope it's not just like a, an hour thing and it's done. Um, and if, if they do that, maybe it'll be more than one part. I, I wouldn't mind that. Uh, but if they're going to do it, man, do it up and make it make it nice and long. Um, give us all of that stuff that Kyle was was uh, was talking about when he was on our show. Um, and, and, you know, just just tell us everything. Um, it's going to be hard to swallow and know that we won't see it. But Give it all to us anyway, because you know we, we want to know a little bit of what Bray had in in that brilliant mind of his, um, and and that we didn't unfortunately get to see. Uh, so yeah, this is going to be tremendous. I I hope that the panel um, will be televised at some point, or, or they will show it. I'm sure somebody will probably record it anyway when they're there if they can. Uh, and it'll probably be on YouTube, but I kind of hope they put that on Peacock as well and, and show that at some point going to be tv 14 yeah well you know some of that stuff is is uh like, like i said that costume that he had um very very scary costume um so i i could see that it you know it might be a, a little bit of stuff there that may be you know not for necessarily for younger people so all right let me see what people's number ones are um Bray Wyatt documentary and I quit match. Christian got spiked by Copeland. The Bray documentary and pre-ordering Becky's book. Yeah, Becky Lynch has a book out. She was on yep. Busted Open talking about it. Um, it was a really cool interview that uh, Dave did with her. Uh, and she, you know, talking about how she put that together and, um, you know, all about her family and stuff like that. It was a little sad, too. And it was talking about how, you know, her dad would have been uh, very proud of her and and, uh, and doing that. So uh, and she compared it to, like, uh, Mick Foley. Cause, and I remember reading Mick's book. It was fantastic. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah, she has a book coming out. So you can pre-order that, I believe, on Amazon right now, actually, if you're interested. Um Insiders party, baby. Looking forward to the Bray Wyatt documentary. Side note four, four. To, I saw you were advertising that, dude. Uh, <laughs> Tazzy's hyping that up uh, on the uh, on the on the X. Uh, he had that out there in the four four twenty four. Um, and you could look at a calendar and see what day that is uh, and what that's going to mean for uh, for Tazzy there. So uh, so yeah, that's going to be that's going to be big. <laughs> Sound the alarm, baby. <laughs> love it, man. Love it. Clown says the uh, announcement of the Bray Wyatt documentary going to watch right now. The tag team of MDK Housen, Nick Gage, and Dan Housen versus violence is forever. Uh, John G says, can't wait for your return. Uh, Damien says, hello, Tazzy. It's going to be TV 14 as well. Uh, I just want rambling rabbit. Uh, Adam Copeland winning the TNT title was DRO's number one. Uh, when Jimmy and Solo showed up, I was like, that's it. Props to Becky for becoming an American citizen. Yeah, that's right. She did. Uh, she did get her uh, citizenship. So that's very cool as well. Uh, war game. War games. Uh, six man tag after the pay per view, possibly, says Aaron. All right. Well, there you go, guys. Uh, I believe that is all we've got for the night. Um, yeah, that's going to do it for tonight's show. Um, listen, uh, glad you came out and joined us. We had, I mean, I, I know there's probably- Look at what we got right now. Dude, it's insane. 
Uh, this is, I know there's probably a lot watching on X, uh, which yep. is, which is awesome. Uh, but man, oh man, it's great stuff, man. We are getting more people watching this than we have ever had. Uh, so that's brilliant. Thank you so much uh, for watching and for checking out the show. We really appreciate all of you uh, that come out and do that. Uh, not just tonight, but every single night that we're on, we appreciate you all. Uh, make sure that yes, if you haven't done so, and you would head over to YouTube, please do that. Like, and subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate that if you could. Uh, also, uh, those of you who watch in other places, like I said, if you watch on Twitch, make sure you follow. If you watch on uh, on X, make sure you share it. Uh, just share the stream. That would help us out there uh, as well. So next time we'll see you guys will be Thursday for TNA uh, Impact at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So guys, as I said before the show started, it's a great time to be a wrestling fan. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. However you choose to do, uh, have a great time. Uh, enjoy the wrestling. And uh, yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, have a great rest of your night. Enjoy your Sunday. Uh, and hopefully we will see you all next time. Be safe. Be kind to one another. And we'll talk to you all soon. Have a great one. Have a good one, guys. We'll see you soon.